Imagine a toilet. It performs seemingly magical feats, whisking your waist away from right in front of your eyes. But over time, that toilet inevitably breaks down. Wear and tear, clogging, and general erosion lead to the toilet overflowing and your downstairs neighbor fuming. In much the same way, the oil pipelines of the United States provide an unfortunately essential service to the majority of Americans by transporting massive amounts of fuel across the country for domestic use and to our ports for export. But among the many problems with this system is that these pipelines are prone to leakage and bursting. And when oil leaks from this network of veins stretching across the country, it's not a bathroom that's being flooded or a neighbor getting upset. Instead, it's whole livelihoods destroyed as a result of contamination of farms and clean water. Today, I'm going to use the Keystone XL pipeline to outline why there's such controversy around oil pipelines and why it's necessary to reimagine this form of energy transportation. The Keystone XL pipeline expansion has dominated the environmental news circuit ever since the National Energy Board approved TransCanada's application for the pipeline in March of 2010. For the last seven years, there's been a constant struggle between demonstrators and pipeline proponents over the fate of Keystone XL. One of the main arguments fielded by Keystone's critics is the leakage and contamination risks inherent in any pipeline and the damage that could be caused by a pipeline that would transport over 510,000 barrels of oil per day. As pipelines grow older, the wear of liquids such as the especially dirty tar sands oil flowing through Keystone XL inevitably causes corrosion and leakage. Considering that pipelines are often left in the ground for years or even decades without maintenance due to a lack of government oversight, leakage as a result of aging infrastructure is not just a possibility, but a reality. Even on newly constructed pipelines, leaks still occur. For example, on November 16th, 2017, the original Keystone Pipeline, which has been operating since 2010, leaked 210,000 gallons of oil onto land right outside of Sioux Territory in South Dakota. These leaks contaminate farmland, render water sources useless, and require costly cleanups. Repairing old pipeline infrastructure is necessary to prevent leaks, but it should only be seen as a short-term solution to a much larger problem. One of the other main reasons for protests surrounding the Keystone XL pipeline was to hinder tar sands production in Canada. By blocking the arteries of tar sands production in Alberta, the potential markets for fossil fuels dwindle and thus the extraction of fossil fuels lessens. Building more and newer pipelines means locking the United States and the countries it exports to into a fossil fuel dependent system for decades to come. So the answer to a leaky or old pipeline is not to build a new one, which means that protests at the front lines of these proposed pipelines, as we've seen at Standing Rock to stop the Dakota Access Pipeline and across the country in response to the Keystone expansion, are essential to protecting water, land, indigenous sovereignty, and ending our structural dependence on fossil fuels. However, in order to cut back on these pipeline expansions that harm land and people, we need to provide solid alternatives. In a recently published study by a group of 21 academic researchers, they argue that 80% decarbonization of the United States by 2050 is not only possible, but also economically feasible. But this requires a quote-unquote diverse portfolio of technologies that include not only wind and solar, but other solutions like carbon capture. In order to build this low-carbon future, we need to grasp that stopping the construction of new pipelines is a crucial step towards freeing us from our reliance on fossil fuels. This video was made possible in part by the wonderful people who support me on Patreon. If you're interested in helping me grow this channel, head on over to Patreon and pledge a small amount of money for every video I release. In return, I'll send you gifts like a handwritten thank you note or an Our Changing Climate sticker. As always, if you like what you just saw, share it around and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next Friday.